You've probably seen this speed ramp trick everywhere. Car edits, real estate edits, even the shopping cart went viral using it. But here's how to do it fast and efficiently inside Premiere Pro with no plugins and no guesswork. So a speed ramp is when you gradually speed up or slow down a clip to keep the motion smooth. It's called a ramp because the speed change eases in gradually and not all at once. It's way more natural than a hard speed change and it lets you control the flow of an edit. Now, speed ramping in Premiere Pro can be tricky. The controls are kind of buried, the interface isn't the most intuitive, and tweaking the speed graph can feel pretty clunky. Plus, there's no built-in motion blur, so even that requires a workaround. But once you know where everything is, it's actually super easy to get clean dynamic results. Let me show you. So let's first walk through how to actually speed ramp the easy way. Start with your clip in the timeline. To unlock speed ramping, you need to enable time remapping first. Most people do this by right clicking the clip, going all the way down to show clip keyframes, then time remapping, and finally enabling speed. But here's the faster way. Just right click this tiny FX icon on your clip, go straight to time remapping and enable speed. Then hit P on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool. Now add your keyframes to the white speed line one where you want the ramp to start and one where you want it to stop. Change back to your selection tool and now click the line between those keyframes and drag it up to speed up that section or down to slow it down. Now here's a quick tip, hold shift while dragging to move and clean 5% increments. That makes it way easier to land on round numbers like 100 or 200%. Also, if you're planning to slow down the footage, you can hit command J with your clip selected and change your time interpolation to optical flow for smoother slow motion. Now, before we get into customizing the ramp shape, quick shout out to Brevity. So if you're like me and constantly cutting social or client content, captions can be a huge time suck. Brevity lets you auto-generate styled captions like these, similar to CapCut, directly inside Premiere Pro. Way faster than the built-in tools and way less cleanup. I'll drop the link in the description if you wanna check it out. Now, back to custom ramp shapes. With our speed change made, click and drag the edges of these keyframes to stretch them out a few frames. This is what creates that gradual ramp instead of a sudden jolt. Then click in between these stretched keyframes to reveal the blue bezier handles. These let you fine tune the curve. Go subtle for smooth or sharp for something punchier. Since Premiere doesn't give us built-in motion blur for speed ramps like After Effects does, you'll need to fake it. Drop an adjustment layer over the ramp section, add the directional blur effect, set the direction to 90 degrees, or whatever you want, I'm not your dad, and keyframe the blur amount from zero to 15, then from 15 to zero as the ramp finishes. This will give you a clean natural blur to match the motion. Now Adobe, if you're listening, you nailed motion blur on speed ramps and After Effects, just bring it into Premiere Pro. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Do it! Now that you've got the technique down, let's get into a few fun ways you can actually use it in your edits. So the first one's a transition method where you blend two clips together using a speed ramp. It works great if they have similar camera movement like the shopping cart video from earlier. Now it's worth mentioning, I think a lot of those viral edits are done inside After Effects as it looks like they're using the stabilized motion feature inside AE. But to keep everything inside Premiere today, let's just make sure to add the warp stabilize effect to our clips if needed, and then nest it so we can apply our speed ramp effects. In Premiere, you only need to add one keyframe at the end of the first clip and one at the beginning of the second. The clip edges act as the second keyframe in each case. So on the first clip, add a speed keyframe a few frames before it ends, then drag the speed line up to increase the speed and create the ramp. Do the same with the start of the second clip and then delete the space in between the two clips. Also, don't forget to add a directional blur adjustment layer above the entire ramp here as well. Next is multiple ramps on one clip. You see this technique all the time in real estate walkthroughs. Those fast paced one take tours where the editor slows down in each room, then ramps up the speed in between in the hallways. In Premiere, it's just like the single ramp method, but instead of one set of keyframes, you add several. Wherever you want to change speed, drop in a pair of keyframes and ramp up or down between them. Super simple, but here's a big tip. Increase your video track height and zoom in on the timeline while working. It gives you much more precision when adjusting the Bezier handles. Otherwise, you're pretty much working blind. And of course, don't forget the motion blur adjustment layers here as well. Just copy, paste, and reuse them as needed to save a bunch of time. So to recap, enable time remapping, set your keyframes, adjust the speed, shape the ramp, and use blur to smooth it all out. Once you get comfortable with it, speed ramps become a go-to tool for controlling pace and adding flow to your edits. Now, if only Premiere would let us ramp audio too. Maybe I'll be back soon with a workaround for that mess. But until then, peace.